Good evening, everybody. Welcome to um, Monday night. <clears throat> Welcome to Making It Monday. It's so nice to have your company. What a funny old week it's been, hasn't it? We, we kind of missed out last week and we're sort of playing catch up now. So it's lovely to see you all. I can see you all buzzing in. So that's brilliant. Thank you so much for that. Um, yeah, so um, it's, it's a bit of a funny week because I've got to, like I said, I've got to play catch up. And if all things um, work out, I'll be able to do the Christmas pudding live on Thursday morning. Now, I know that won't suit a lot of you. I appreciate that. But it's a case of trying to fit it all in. Oh, I can just hear myself on my, my laptop. Just one moment. Um, <clears throat> yes, it's just a case of fitting it all in, really. And Thursday morning was, was good for me. <laughs> and I was going to see if I could get Adrienne to come over because Adrienne's design uh, that we use to, to make the Christmas pudding um, applique. So I'm going to see if she's going to pop along and, uh, and give me a hand and just be my co-pilot for the, for, the, for the Facebook Live, YouTube Live as well. <clears throat> but that means, of course, then we've caught up, which is really important that we, we, ke we keep... Um, everything ticking over like we normally do and then everybody knows what's happening and everybody knows where the YouTube tutorials are and where the pattern is all that sort of thing so uh, hopefully on a Thursday morning like I say now like I said again I'll just repeat it because I know people are joining me all the time um, that it may not suit you it may not suit you and I appreciate that um, but um, I have other co other commitments on evenings in the week and um, and so do other people that um, you know that I follow so it's important that we we do it when we're not going to interrupt anybody else and of course the the live is there for you all the time to have a little look at so um, I'm sure you won't mind um, and that's what we're going to do on Thursday morning. Hopefully, fingers crossed. <laughs> Last week, you know, we had the technical problems with Facebook. That was interesting, wasn't it? Um, <clears throat> but also, I went down with a heck of a cold. And uh, so it's a good job that I, I just couldn't, I just, you wouldn't have been able to understand what I was saying. You can still hear I've got a bit of a throat and I've still got a tickle. So you have to forgive me if I, if I cough and splutter a little bit. Yes, yeah, so um, anyway, welcome to another Making It Monday. We're now on Project 47. Isn't that incredible? I, I, can, I know I say that a lot, but it is quite incredible when you think about it. 47 projects, plus we have the bonus one, um, which is the Prinny. Um, and that's quite amazing, really, isn't it, that we've uh, carried on. I didn't really think that I'd keep coming up with ideas. <laughs> So uh, um, anyway, hopefully my, my admin team who are perhaps watching this evening, uh, I'll check them out in a minute, see if they are. Oh, Jackie is, I can see that. Um, they're going to be contributing as well. So it's going to be like a sort of team effort, really, which is lovely. Um, so, so welcome, everybody. Welcome from uh, Facebook and welcome from YouTube. I just need to get the project, which I remembered I popped over here and I was going to um, uh, bring it in before we started, but I forgot. Now look, doesn't that look amazing? It's called Prezi Galore. There is a reason why I called it Prezi Galore. Well, I'm not going to even bother going into that because I obviously have to come up with names for all these things. And I just wanted it to look like you'd wrapped a present up and popped it under the tree. And, and I think we've achieved that. Um, well, at least I think we have. And, but also the fact is that it's, it's actually a really big bag. Um, it's kind of like a pouch, I suppose, in a way. I don't know what you'd call it, but it's a Christmas stroke holiday um, gift bag. And in actual fact, obviously, like anything, think about using beautiful spring color fabric or summer color fabric um <clears throat> oh excuse me i've got I, you, I will have to take a drink from time to time um so yeah so that's what we're going to make this is prezi galore this is number 47 she looks great on the screen doesn't she now obviously i've used quite sort of um uh, sort of 
uh, animated type fabric, if you know what I mean. It's, it's, it's kind of um, cartoony, I suppose. But think about all those gla glamorous, gl gorgeous fabrics that you may have in your stash. You may have some tartan fabric, some uh, fabric with foiling on, um, you know, that sort of thing. Um, if you're using directional fabric, please be aware of your direction, okay? Because you want the direction to go from bottom to top. So if we unwrap um, Prezi Galore, you can see that she has a small, the small end of the ribbon goes um, and it's stitched onto the end here. Look, all of these things you don't have to do, right? Use the ribbon, but you don't have to stitch it on. It's only got one row of stitching, so you could take it off if you want. But um, I really wanted to do something that would automatically look gorgeous, but obviously you can decide whether it's something that you want to include, yeah? Because it's quite a big piece. It's about, I think, 50 inches. So um, if I turn it this way, I've got a little present in there. And so we've got the short end on the bottom. We'll cover this as we go, but I've got the long end, um, it's, and it's still, it's only attached there. It's only attached on the bottom there. Um, and then, then, of course, that wraps round, and then it obviously it ties into a bow. And this band here, this band here is permanent. Again, you don't have to do that. You can leave it plain. If you don't have any ribbon, leave it plain. But I just thought it would look rather cute, made up looking like a parcel. So it opens up quite big and um, I've got the seam, and you'll not be able to see this very well, but I've got the seam going on the inside because when I flap the front over, this bit doesn't have the seam in the middle. Um, and I just felt that looked a little bit nicer. Um, and I didn't want the seam at the side. Call me fickle, I don't mind. So um, I attach my ribbon band afterwards, but I'm gonna talk to you about how you can do that beforehand. And it might be for you a lot easier than the way I did it. Sometimes I make things as I go, um, produce the pattern and it's afterwards I think actually we could have do this way we could do it that way you know you can leave the ribbon off you can leave the ribbon on um, but one thing that um, our Kath who's my proofreader our Kath said is that you could make one and gift it to a friend obviously with a gift inside for, for Christmas or the holidays or birthday anniversary um, and then she can make one and gift one back to you and then the next year swap over and that that this bag would last a lifetime um, it's not going to run out it's not going to be damaged in any way and of course you can pop it in the wash if it gets a bit mucky so you can see that it's got a nice fairly hefty um, sort of gift you know smellies <laughs> collection in there but you, if you have a look at the size of it it's almost the size I would think of a Christmas stocking um, so it is quite big you can see that um, um, and it, it's gonna get it, maybe I don't know, fill it with little gifts in there. Sometimes little gifts are more exciting than big gifts because there's lots of unwrapping to do. But in here, you're just gonna pop them straight in. Um, that would take a small jigsaw puzzle. It would take um, certainly a couple of, um, you know, like car toys if you're going to make one for the children, something like that. So instead of making a Christmas stocking, um, make one of these and then you can fill it up with all manner of things. Look at the size of it, it's amazing. This is obviously, a, I would say, a fairly regular size gift box, um, and it fits perfectly in here. In fact, let's just turn it over, because I like the seam um, along the center of the bag. So I'll pop that along. This then comes over the top. You can just about see what I'm doing. And then we've got the short ribbon, which goes, it's, it's the one that sits on the top because it's the short one. And then the bottom ribbon is the long one. We'll cover all this as we make it. Bring it over and tie, tie your bow. And I think that looks incredibly professional. I think it looks very smart. Um, and I think you'll probably make quite a few of these, actually. I, th I really do. So um, let's get started. <laughs> now, one of these, um, let's probably back over there. 
what this is one of the patterns where you don't have to print it out there's no pattern pieces as such it's literally you can read it off the screen which is what I've done today I didn't have time to print it off so I've got it on my um, laptop in front of me and if I need to refer to it I know it's just there um, so yeah so that's it really now the, if you go to the pattern if you have a quick look if you download it and you've printed it out already um, the first thing you would you see is the sides put wrong sides together and pinned ready for stitching we're going to do French seams which is exciting um, to be honest I haven't measured this whether this is the long side or the short side with a fat quarter you do get a, a um a slightly longer side so gosh I, I don't think it's it's worth even thinking about whether it's which side you've got together well what I've said is put the short edges together so I'm just going to trim off my salvage because you really really don't want to be using a salvage and of course with a fat quarter you always get a salvage sometimes you get the salvage with the print on of you know what um, who the designer is I need that <laughs> and sometimes you don't so um but always take it off it's um it's really handy if you do that so this is the part where i was going to talk to you about the ribbon so if we quickly go to um the overhead let's see if i can remember to to flick all the bits that i need to flick there we go um i know you're not going to see all of it because it's as i said to you before it's quite a big piece this isn't directional so I'm very happy about that because sometimes it's such a pain isn't it um, we could and I'm do you know what I'm really not fussed about this but I, we could open it right out it's, it's kind of like a square we can fold it in a, a triangle yeah so you've got it in a triangle and we know this is the long side because that's um, that's longer you can see it's a little bit longer not by much this isn't a true fat quarter funnily enough um, a true fat quarter is an American fat quarter so it's done by it's not it's done by the yard rather than the inch um, oh that's a silly thing to say it's done by the yard and not the meter <laughs> oh gosh you can tell I've been away a while um, so all I've done is brought the short sides together. Now, if you've got directional fabric, in fact, I haven't, I haven't got the um, the front camera as well. Look, let's let's do that. Let's get the, the front camera in. Hi. So yeah, if you've got directional fabric, well, let's just assume that that's the top. Okay, so that's going to be the top of our bag. You could now, if I get my short piece of ribbon, you could now top stitch that ribbon onto the top of your bag okay and this edge of the ribbon will be incorporated into the French seam I haven't done it that way that's not in the pattern that's my suggestion because I put this on afterwards because it was it was an add-on um, and when I got to the end I thought oh gosh it's, I, I want something else to make it look pretty for everybody so I added all my ribbons and it just about made it so what I would do is if you're going to do it this way and you're going to double stitch this on all the way around measure about two inches down from the top here and then start top stitching so what you would do is open this up and you're just going to lay it on pin it so it's nice and straight and you can top stitch either side of that and it's about I would say take it about two inches down it's not crucial but I do this I'll follow the pattern because that's the best way and then, then nobody's confused so I'm going to put my ribbon away and you can ignore everything I've just said <laughs> right so it's wrong sides together now I haven't ironed my fabric which is really naughty and I'm going to switch my big iron on hope it heats up fairly quickly and I'm going to press my fabric and don't bother putting a crease in here if you can avoid it please avoid it and the first thing we're going to do is to do a French seam on this on this long edge here so this is my short edge as you can see um, you want to make sure that it's that the raw edges are sitting lovely on top of each other and do trim this away if you feel that um, it's it's not going to you want to trim this away so so both of those long edges if I bring this in you can see it's the long edge um, are sitting nicely on top of each other 
um, because with a French seam, we want it to be super neat. And even if we have to cut this afterwards, then I'll cut it afterwards. So you can see I'm not going up to there. I'm not, you can see I'm avoiding that. I don't want to put a crease in it. But I'm bringing this down. I'm shifting my fabric, making sure it's sitting on top of each other and just giving that a little press because um, it really needs it. It's been um, folded up in a bag for the last couple of weeks. Um, and it's, yeah, it needs a little press. So there we are. So what we can do is we can get our clips and let me just get mine and just make sure, like I said, that these two um, edges are sitting nicely on top of each other. We are going to stitch an eighth of an inch. If you find that a little bit difficult, then do a little bit bigger, let's say a quarter of an inch, um, and then trim back because the next seam we do will be quarter of an inch and uh, you don't want any raw edges showing. So just pin your long pieces together like that, okay? And we're gonna stitch along this long edge an eighth of an inch, okay? All the way from top to bottom. <laughs> I've got a big enough, uh, <laughs> big enough desk. So I wonder if my machine is actually on, I think it is. So let's take you to the, um, the side and bring you in on the side. Um, I always got to remember. You remember, was it last week, I think, or the week before, I forgot to move the camera. Um, I think it was. And um, I had to cut that piece out, I think, from memory. <laughs> Still, there we are. Good. So, let's get my foot control in the right place. Stitch length, I've got it on three, um, only f because that's speedy. Maybe you want to take that down to two and a half. So you can see I'm going really quite near the edge, but do make sure that your layers are sitting on top of each other. Take your time. Now, who has cleaned out their machine lately? I want an honest answer to that because um, we, uh, we sort of, in the gold group, we, we, we kind of remind people from time to time to clean their machines because, and that can actually be quite, um, it can be something that really messes your machine up if you haven't cleaned it. So there's my um, seam, very, very tiny as you can see. Um, just check the other side to make sure you've caught um, all the layers which I have, except for one, one tiny bit. Where did I see that? It's just a little bit out. So I'm just going to stitch that again. So just have a look on the back as well as the front. And then we're going to trim that down. So let's just take you back to the, um, the overhead again. We'll just trim that down. There we go. So try and make sure that your material is still nice and flat, that it hasn't twisted. Oh, Cheryl says, not her. Is that right? Clean mine Friday. Oh, so is Mrs. C. Cleaned mine Friday and it was so fluffed up. It's embarrassing, isn't it? And we expect these machines to work for us. And I was talking to a lovely lady, Kim from Six Penny Memories the other day, and she said, you must change your needle. Sorry, I'm cutting, but you can't see. Um, you must change your needle um, every time you, you sew. Well, I, I would say with, you know, every six hours, you must change it. And I'm saying, but, but Kim, that would be every day for me, usually. She said, yep, so put a new needle in every day. So I was like, my goodness me. <laughs> I mean, I do, I do change my needle, but I'm not sure I'm that, I'm that good. Anyway, so... I think maybe your job this week, if you haven't already done it, is to clean your machines, okay? <laughs> That's the job, and I'll be asking you next week. Okay, <laughs> so there we are, I've trimmed it because, look at this now, you see that little bit there? If we were to stitch that into the seam, that might show on the right side. Okay, so little, little frayed bee pieces, just snip away, make that super duper neat. Okay, 
So we've done this right sides together. So now we're going to turn it through. And, and I told you this is a big piece, didn't I? I mean, it's literally a fat quarter, which is amazing. Um, it's a really great way of using up a, a fat quarter. So if I'll keep moving it like that, moving it like that. <laughs> well, we need to press this seam nice and flat now um, because the next stage is to fold that seam um, back on itself with right sides together and do our quarter inch seam. Now you should have lovely clear photographs on the pattern or in the pattern to show you how that looks. So there we are. That's now been pressed open. You can, or you know, pressed nice and flat and there's the seam. So all I'm going to do now is just fold it on that seam. And it says in the pattern, fold on the seam. And because we've pressed it, that's now going to be beautifully neat. So again, just to make sure, I'm going to give it an iron. This big iron sometimes is just lovely. <laughs> sometimes it's too big, sometimes it's just lovely. Because this is a big project, I thought we would use it tonight. There we go. So again, you're not pressing this bit. In fact, if you want to, you can open that up now and give that a press because we, do you remember we, we missed that piece out when we pressed before. So oh, what does this say? I clean after every four bonbons. Does, do you mean that, Laurie, bonbons? And change needle. Ooh. Every four bonbons. Is that something that you make, bonbons? They sound delicious. <laughs> I could do with a bonbon. Right, so look, we folded it on the seam line. So if I, you can't hardly see, but there's the seam running right across that fold there. So now, thank you, um, Jean. Um, I actually had them done today. They look nice, don't they? I let the nail lady choose the colour and she said, this one is all the rage. And I said, I said well, in that case, I want that colour. <laughs> You've got to keep up with the youngsters, haven't you? You've just got to keep up. Right, so let's go to the side camera then. And we'll just do that quarter inch seam. So it's dead easy, as you can tell. So we're putting it under the machine. And we're stitching. This is right sides together now, guys. And we're just doing a quarter of an inch seam allowance. So if you think about it, our seam allowance now is three eighths of an inch because we've done an eighth of an inch initially, and this is a quarter of an inch. So all told, it's three eighths, which is still quite a narrow little seam. It's lovely. So just take your time, go all the way from top to bottom, and break your threads. There we go. So now you can see it makes a beautiful, beautiful channel. And if I turn it through, because we'll need to do that um, anyway. If I turn it through and I show you that seam, I, I mean, I haven't looked at it yet, but I'm hoping that there's no frayed edges. And that's the idea. Oh, look, there's a thread. I can just see it on the monitor. Let me see if I can see it. Yeah, here we go. We just pull it. You don't want a frayed edge. So it's beautifully neat. And because we haven't, we're not lining it, then it, it makes it strong um, and it means that it's really, really tidy and really, really neat. French seams are super. Oh, bobbins. <laughs> well done, Laurie, thank you. So let's go to the overhead again. And we can see how we're getting on. This is so easy. You're going to make loads of these. You really are. You're, you're, because you know what? This last um, sort of, I don't know, this last year, I suppose, it's been really quite important, I think, that we start recycling, upcycling, reusing, you know, just being a little bit more friendly to our environment. And actually... I would say choose the people that you give these to and I don't mean that in a nasty way 
because what you really want to do is next the next Christmas the next holiday season um, I, I would love it if they returned um, gifts back to you in the bags that you made for them uh, and that would just be awesome wouldn't it right so wrong sides together and again you can press this so it's beautifully neat um, you really want it in the center so I would say get your fold it in half there my seam is here my French seam is here let me just do it so you can see um, bring it across and give yourself a little squidge so you've pressed in a, a uh, uh, sort of pleat there not a pleat what do you call it uh, you've just done a squidge <laughs> you've done a squidge and then with your seam just make sure that that is sitting dead over the top of that so let's just put a oops let's just get a clip so we know that's dead center now okay there we are and like I said you can get your iron on that and give it a press please please do that I, I won't I'll miss that bit out but give it a press because really what you want to do is to make sure that that seam sits the same all the way along up to the top so when you get to the top that seam is still sitting in the right way I'm just wondering if I had my seam roller handy but of course I'm, I haven't so anyway there we are so again you want right sides together now did you see that I trimmed my oops <laughs> I trimmed my ends so these sides here top and bottom are now absolutely perfect a crease love a crease thank you Abigail yeah but you see don't forget I've been poorly and um, I've had surg surgical procedures <laughs> All right, let's put you on the um, side camera and that's enough to make anybody a little bit um, do lally right so I folded it in half so the seam is running up the center look there you are I can see that beautifully there so I'm going to do me eighth of an inch again guys all the way across um, just guess if you don't know what an eighth of an inch looks like get your rulers out if you want to be absolutely precise crease I knew it was called something <laughs> oh gosh it's been a long old week it's only Monday <laughs> there's no hope can't even have a sherry right so you've done your eighth of an inch now there you go have a look at that so guess what we do now we're going to turn it through and do that quarter inch. Yes, I am feeling better now, everybody. I am feeling better. I appreciate them. Um, I really appreciate you uh, asking and, and inquiring about my health. And, uh, and, and yes, I have been quite bad, but I'm much better now. <laughs> so thank you very much. And I'll be honest with you. I tell you what did it. I tell you what did it. Rest. I didn't sew for... Um, well I'd say four if not five days which I I can't even remember ever um, I just want my pokey tool just bear with um, I can't ever remember um, doing that so but I thought no and all the ladies on the admin team were telling me to rest so mm, they're in charge you see so I have to do as I'm told so I'm just poking the corners out now I love them really <laughs> let's have a look um oh sarah says she she cleaned her machine a couple of days ago well done sarah um that's on youtube jane says she cleans hers every two months i do change my needle but not that often oh she said actually but heck not that often oh i suppose yeah oh heck not that often yeah that makes sense doesn't it well you know what? i think we're all guilty and you know it's all very well do good as saying oh but you must do this you must do that which you know I'm there I'm you know I'm the one that's gonna tell you but do we do it that often oh, I doubt it I doubt it we forget well I forget yeah so <laughs> not much chance of the rest of us remembering is there dear oh dear anyway so I'm just pressing that seam while I've got it there might as well so don't forget we've done that eighth of an inch so I've turned it now right sides together 
and I'm going to stitch a quarter of an inch along there so it means that the bottom has a beautiful French seam. Now I'll just leave that on the front camera there just for a sec. So keep everything neat, keep everything tidy. With a French seam, you really, really want that edge to be super neat. Uh, I mean, I trimmed those ends off with my scissors before, the long end, but I, the long side, but I would probably put it under my, um, on the mat with the ruler and the rotary cutter. Because um, it really does make a difference. So all the way along, now you will be able to run these up in 15 minutes. Don't forget, it's just a fat quarter. And all you're doing is trimming off the selvage. Only because we never stitch selvages, do we? So, uh, so now you've done your two French seams and they are so gorgeous. I love a French seam. Years and years and years and years and years ago, when I used to make dresses for some very posh places, and I'm sure you've heard my stories, um, I had a very basic machine. It did do a zigzag, but I never used zigzag. I always did French seams. Um, it was just, that's what the designer of the, the dresses, etc., wanted. They wanted French seams on everything. And I suppose once you've done it a few times, you realize how neat and tidy a French seam is. Okay, so there is our tube, if you like. Well, we've, we've um, stitched the end. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to follow the pattern and I'm going to turn my top edge over about a quarter of an inch and about a quarter of an inch again and top stitch so it's neat. And then we'll go on to attach the ribbons, okay? So let's just get this on the side camera again. And I'm not, um, I'm not going to press and pin and stitch and baste and all of that. Um, I'm just literally going to sort of go for it. I do, I, I am a little bit of a rogue when it comes to things like that. So I'm just folding once, I'm folding again. Um, start at the seam if you want to. I'm just starting plonked right in the center. Um, it, you know, I'm not gonna lose any sleep over that. At the seam where you've got your French seam, just try and keep that neat. So I'm literally, <laughs> folding the fabric as I go. But by all means, press that quarter of an inch over and quarter of an inch again. If a quarter of an inch is too little for you, do three eighths of an inch. You don't have to do everything I say. You just make it so it suits you, okay? Um, there's no rules to, to this at all. You'll always hear me say, um, you know, do it your way. And often people will say to me um, on YouTube, um, wherever afterwards, especially YouTube, because obviously that's, that's there kind of all the time. Oh, but you could have done it this way, you could have done it that way. Well, yes, of course I could. We can't, we can't always do it the same as everybody else might do it. That's what makes us unique. And also, it, what I'm doing maybe is the easiest way for you too. So, you know, just just chill, just enjoy. Don't get too hung up on should have done this, should have done that. Gosh, right. So, <laughs> and of course, press this, press this because it's um, it deserves to be pressed. So there's our top edge. Look, I just did and um, folded over once, folded over again and top stitched. And of course you could use some fancy gold thread, couldn't you? You could really, you could really make it super duper um, pretty. You could add lace, you could add, um, do some, um, uh, I was gonna say lace, and I nearly said it again. Um, <laughs> you could add some ribbon here if you wanted to. Um, you could do a fancy embroidery stitch on your machine. Um, you know what, there's tons of things you could do if you want to. So now this is where I said to you, you might find it easier putting that ribbon in at the very, very beginning. Because look, my machine, this beautiful Juki of mine, which I absolutely love, and if anybody took it away from me, I'd, they would have to arm wrestle me for it, um, does not have a 
uh, free arm facility okay this is all solid which makes sometimes a little bit difficult when I'm doing something like this where I would prefer to have a free arm but you know what I love my machine so much I just make it fit I make it work so for me I measured down uh, one and a quarter inches so I got my little two and a half inch um, ruler which is the cutest thing ever and I just measured down um, from the top edge here from this folded edge here in one and a quarter inches now look you pin this <laughs> put it on and pin it <laughs> I'm just going to measure as I go right now I'm not expecting you to do this if you feel uncomfortable about it <laughs> really I you know it's not it's not it's like sometimes it's not do as I do do as I say so look, I'm just folding over my ribbon I don't know if you can see let's just if I put my light on I don't think it makes a lot of difference um, I fold it over my ribbon about a quarter of an inch or so and I'm just going to pop it down onto the crease I think what I'll do is I'll pin it so you can see what I'm talking about I just reach and get a pin um, let me measure down uh, one, and a, one and a quarter hold on bear with caller and I'm not going to top stitch this folded bit yet but I will do at the end and I'll show you what I mean so look let me whiz that around so this is this is the folded edge where my finger is and down to the top of that piece of ribbon is one and a quarter inches but if like I said to you before I would perhaps measure uh, two inches maybe when you at the very very beginning when we talked about putting the ribbon on first um, it, it, it doesn't matter if you're a, a, a millimeter out or a quarter of an inch out it's just a pretty effect so that's what mine looks like and as I'm going around I'm going to measure one and a quarter inches from the fold <coughs> you know where I've turned over my my edge and when I come back to um, that and I started I started at the seam you don't have to do that but I find that a good place to start because um, it, it just is um, because that's where the, the, the everywhere else is lovely and neat and clean so we don't want to add any more sort of stitching and, and messing about <coughs> anywhere else we might as well keep everything the same so I'm going to like I said I'm going to measure down one and a quarter inches I'm, I'm going to use the part of the ruler I can see one and a quarter Oh, it's not quite it's not quite one and a quarter but let me just keep it that's more like one and a half that's fine <laughs> so I'm just gonna go all the way around and then we'll go around again I love these little rulers but they do sometimes confuse you don't they where the lines are I'm sorry if you can't see much I'm just literally top stitching this ribbon on look if I if I do that you can see you can see what I've done yeah and so what you probably want to do is lay this flat on your desk and pin it and just make sure that you've got it super neat now I saw a comment a moment ago from Adrienne will look nice with some Christmas applique on it yes it would Adrienne now Adrienne are you coming over on Thursday morning to do the Christmas pudding with me because of course Adrienne is Zippy Doodle Designs. Oh, who says pom poms? Jeanette! Rick Crackle pom poms! Oh my gosh, now I wish I'd got my um, pom poms out now. <laughs> oh gosh, pom poms would look amazing. You see, if you think about a Christmas stocking, you know, as we know it, um, you know we, we wouldn't think twice about putting pom-poms on a Christmas stocking but because this isn't it doesn't you don't naturally think about it I don't well that's my think anyway so look I'm I know it's difficult to see but as I haven't got a free arm it won't sit well for you to see so I'm just coming back to where I started do make sure it's lined up do make sure that when you get to it and you'll need to trim this a little bit so let's just trim that away I always like to give you measurements of more than what you need 
and again you're going to fold that end over and pop it over the top of your where you started so if I do that bit and then what you're going to do so let me just try and show you is it's nothing like binding but you're just going to place that on top in fact let me do it and then show you I think that'd be the easiest thing and I've just literally placed that on the top so bear with and I'll show you I'll just cut my threads just another little one there to cut so sorry there we go so let me hold that may not see that yet so let me just do a bit of stitching and of course I'm using cream because I always use cream but you might want to use a matching thread or gold thread now then can you see let me do a bit more so oh, oh I didn't mean to do that heck just cut my threads never mind there we go so look all I've done oh that's better I folded the ribbon over can you see and I've just laid it on top of where I started and I've top stitched so it lies nice and flat I've top stitched down there and now I'm coming up this side here to hold it down okay I'm sure you I'm sure you know what I'm talking about but I do like to show you and uh, make it really obvious because you know we, we do have new stitchers joining us every week and um, not everybody knows exactly what to do first first thing you know the first time they stitch not everything is um, perhaps natural to them um, you know so we have to remember that we need to keep it and that's what the making it Mondays are all about it's all about the basics of stitching with touching on a little bit of um, interesting things like free motion um, the French seams if you've never done a French seam before tonight's the night so there we are you can see that nicely now and and of course like I said I've top stitched in cream but you might want to oh Kate says our bobbin has run out what time Thursday morning maybe half past ten ish oh Adrian says yes I'll be there Thursday so I'll be live on YouTube and Facebook again and we're going to be doing just one moment the Christmas pudding but we're going to do this large this is really a map for your pudding um, but it's also a giant coaster and it has a lovely easy um, envelope back and we get the right size there we go so it's dead, dead easy um, and if you don't like doing the applique then just glue it down and leave it you, you know I shouldn't worry too much if you're going to wash it a lot then I'd say a bit of stitching is needed but um, that's what we'll do Thursday morning everybody yeah well this is some um, who says that dot well um, I've actually used a a, a, a proper high sheen embroidery thread and in real life the stitches look really nice because they've got a sheen to them yeah anyway <coughs> I digress so we've put our um, top ribbon on okay so let's just quickly quickly because we've practically finished let's just quickly go to the overhead so you see what I mean you're going to make these in 15 minutes now if you think oh don't get a grip Liz get a grip I tr trust me it's, this is a 15 minute project all I would say to you if you think oh gosh that's that's ridiculous I'm never going to do that then don't buy so many presents then you won't have to uh, <laughs> then you won't have to make so many so you can see how this looks now so you can see when we fold it to put our gift in I'll have to find a gift <laughs> So all we need to do is this bit so in the pattern now I haven't got the pattern well I have got it on my screen I can, hold on let me just have a quick look because I just need to remember um, <clears throat> what I say about the length of the ribbon so just bear with sorry you got, you're just seeing my arm uh, 16 inches there we go sorted right so if you measure about 16 inches well this ruler is 14 so let's say about there 
around if I do it so it makes sense to me. What I've got is I've got my seam here, yeah? And the front of the pouch, the, the Prezi Galore, is, is lovely, there's no seam. And that's how we want it to be. And to be perfectly honest, it doesn't matter too much how you put this ribbon on, but seriously, if you want your your pus pussy galore, if you want your Prezi Galore to look like um, a gift wrap present, you want it so there's no seam here. Um, and, and there's my seam going along there. Um, <clears throat> yeah. So there's my 16 inch piece there, look. And all we want to do is we'll pop that under so we know that we've got our long piece of ribbon going underneath, yeah? And we'll just wriggle that along. So there's my short end, okay? You happy with that? You happy that that's the 16 inch piece about, roughly. And all I'm going to do is top stitch it across here. That's all I'm going to do. If you want to fold that up and top stitch it all the way across, I, I prefer to keep it fairly invisible. In fact, I want to turn it that way because this is uh, this is a like floristry uh, ribbon, which is a bit um, scruffy. That's that's a bad side. So that's going to come up and that'll be a good side. So I'm just literally, and you can press that seam so it's nice and straight. I'm literally going to top stitch from here to here. I'm, I'm just going to stitch across here. All right. Now let me keep you. Mm, nah, I'll go to the front camera just for a minute. I've explained what I'm going to do, then I'll show you. It's just to make sure you're happy. And pin it if you want to. You know, um, when I said 16 inches, it's kind of a loose measurement. So, you know, make sure that French seam is right in the center of your ribbon. Do a back stitch. This is important because this is going to get, this is going to get the strain of making it into a bow. So you don't, you want it to be strong. So nice back stitch. That's it. Okay, let's see. Um, yeah, I'll keep you on the overhead. I'll, rather, I'll put you on the overhead. <coughs> okay, so look, that's attached to that. And all I've done is top stitched here. That's just flat under there, look. And that's how it is. And then all we're going to do is bring that over and uh, tie a bow, okay? And then it would, perfect. Well, except we haven't done the the V's. Now with the V's, this is something I learned years ago and you really have to concentrate <laughs> because if you do this wrong, you'll end up not with a V, but with a point. Okay, let's just get this out of the way. Right, so fold it in half. Doesn't matter whether it's wrong side or right side, doesn't matter about that. This is my folded edge here. This is my edges of my ribbon there, okay? So there's my folded edge there. And you're going to cut from the folded edge out. <coughs> oh, excuse me, I'm so sorry, I've got such a throat. That gives you the perfect V, okay? <laughs> I'm well trained in bows. Anybody that's known me for about eight years. Um, it's 50 inches of length in the pattern. So there's your ribbon. You're going to fold it in half. Okay. This is your folded edge. And you're cutting from the folded edge out. Like that. You'll end up with a perfect V. If you do the other way around, you'll end up with a point. <laughs> it's one of those things that, you know, has stayed with me all these years. So let's go back to the front. Hurrah! We've made it. We've come through pretty unscathed. <laughs> right, so there's our Prezi Galore made. You can see that my ribbons are attached. I've got my ribbon going across the top. But like I said to you, right at the very beginning, you don't have to attach the ribbon if you don't want to. But I just find that, for me, 
Um, I think if you're going to be gifting this, you want it to make it look nice. You don't want that ribbon to slip and slide away. You want it to stay put. And that's exactly what it will do. So if I get a gift, I haven't got a gift. Hold on, I've got a bag, just a pouch. Oh, hold on. It's got, I don't know, actually, I don't know what it's got inside. Let me have a look. <laughs> oh, it's got all my jukey stuff in there. I should have known. I forget, though. So that's my, one of my um, half-zip pouches. Have a look on, on YouTube because it's quite a good tutorial. So anyway, <laughs> I'm putting that in there. So you can see how big it is. It's, it's a really good size. There we go. Push it right down the bottom. That'll do. <laughs> and uh, can you see it? Okay, I know I'm a little bit set back. <clears throat> this comes over the top. The other ribbon, it's not quite at the bottom. This other ribbon comes underneath, just like you would if you're wrapping a parcel. Over the top. And, oh, I've got a one bow now. <coughs> and there we are. There's our gift wrapped. I think it looks great. I think it, that needs to go down a little bit more. And you can off it about a little bit. There we go. And I think it, yeah, like I say, I think it looks great. And I like the fact that it does, you can unwrap it. So you are undoing the bow. You're going into the bag to, to get your gifts out. And I think it would be great for kids. Um, and also the great thing is that um, it does look like you've wrapped up a gift, spent a lot of time, and I know you're going to make these in 15 minutes. And that's the idea of a Making It Monday project, isn't it? So there we are. So quick, few couple of reminders. First of all, reminder about our Christmas pudding mat. It's a, like an oversized coaster. So don't forget in the pattern for the Christmas pudding mat, there's also there's two sizes. There's this size here, the smaller size, but there's also a one that's going to be kind of this big. Um, and that's perfect for making table mats. And I'm the pattern isn't a table mat, but I've given you the pieces so you can do table mats. We're going to be making the Christmas pudding mat, this one, the little circular one. Um, secondly, don't forget to go to the website to download your pattern. Um, as usual, there's been um, just over 500 downloaded since midday. Um, so, so thank you for that. Good luck. Well done. <laughs> I don't get anything for it, but good luck. Well done. Um, and also don't forget that this is just one, not this one, but this one is just one of 47. So go on to the website, have a look at all the MIM patterns and see if you've missed out on one and, uh, and treat yourself just for a few pennies really, treat yourself to uh, another pattern. And maybe some of those patterns uh, are gonna be suitable for Christmas presents. I know they are. So there we are. We've got another another super duper pattern next week. Um, it's in the making as we speak, and I'm looking really looking forward to bringing that to you. Um, I've got my um, Happy Christmas bunting up, so you can see we're we're getting in the mood here at Lizzie Towers. Thank you so much for joining me. It's been an absolute treat. Um, it's it's always a pleasure to be here on a. Monday night, even more so this week after the troubles and tribulations of uh, last Monday's Facebook, <laughs> which didn't exist. That was weird, wasn't it? Uh, and thank you for your compliments about my jumper. I just really felt I should be festive tonight. It's been great. Thank you so much. We're a little bit early, but I hope you don't feel you've been shortchanged. So I'll see you all again next week. Um, have a lovely week. Um, enjoy your sewing and get onto the MIM Facebook page and show me what you've made. I love seeing them. Night, night, everybody. Night, night.